ladies and gentlemen welcome back to AS astrology and uh, this is Anmol Sehgal today's topic will be related to the transit of Mars into the sign of Aries from the sign of Pisces so now what the thing is that Mars was basically in a lot of frustration and chaos when it was in Pisces it has been uh, terrible months basically because of Mars transit to Pisces then to uh, Aries and then going retrograde and moving back to Pisces so you know Mars in Pisces is like um, that that Mars is trying to extend himself to you know shake the hand and make actions but somehow he is restricted due to certain forces but now what happens is in the sign of Aries, what Mars do, um, does is that Mars just extends himself and say, yeah, let's do it. So this is the energy of Mars in Aries. Mars is basically frustrated, not being able to take actions, not being able to uh, execute the globe and move ahead, move on towards its goals in the sign of Pisces. Whereas in Aries, which is the own sign of Mars it does extremely well so once I came across a video where uh, it was told that Mars in the 12th house or Mars in the sign of Pisces what happens is that a person keeps on bottling up things a person keeps on uh, somehow just for the sake of their relationship they tend to bottle up their emotions and bottle up their true self they don't show their true self to others and they take they are very frustrated and they are not being able to take any actions but what happens is when they decide to take any action the marriage falls apart or the relationship falls apart so that is the energy of Mars in the sign of Pisces and I have actually uh, practically I have analyzed a few charts with the Mars in 12th house and I've seen this theme working for them. So that's why Mars has been in not a very welcoming place when it was in the sign of Pisces. So now what happens is that Mars is going to transit in the sign of Aries on 24 December 2020. And it is going to remain in the sign of Aries till 22nd of February 2021 for approximately two months. So on a whole, I would say that this transit is going to be a, an extremely good one. Of course, there are some backlogs to it. There are some demerits to it. But of course, um, you know, astrology works both ways. Astrology has every placement has its positive point points and it also has its negative points so that's why uh, Mars and Aries does give bad effect too but the good effects are much more than that and the reason behind it is that Mars is in its own sign Aries is the first sign of the zodiac belt and it is basically ruled by Mars and it is the Mool Tricone sign of Mars it means that it is the office of Mars so Mars is quite comfortable over there. Mars is uh, Mars wants to be in Aries. So first we need to talk about that what the sign of Aries is. So the sign of Aries is the first sign and it represents our head, our brain. So wherever the sign of Aries is, the concentration of a person's mind is over there. For example, if a person is Aries Ascendant, such a person will be quite self-conscious, a bit selfish, self-centered, very much uh, uh, particular with how they appear, very sporty, adventurous. And for example, if a person is uh, Sagittarius Ascendant, what happens is such people have their all focus since Aries is in the fifth house, such people have their focus on their children, on their uh, romantic encounters, on their creative skills, on dramatic arts. And if someone is Gemini Ascendant, their focus will remain on the friend circle on gains, gains through social networking circles since Aries is 
in the 11th house. So you know that's how we judge that what does Aries sign represent and how we are going to see the results. So now we need to know that uh, what does Mars represent? Mars is the soldier. Mars is the minister to the king. Mars is a person who goes out, fights for and provides the people. And you know, Mars is a kind of energy. Mars is actually the most malefic planet in astrology. Even more than Rahu, Ketu, Saturn, Mars is the most malefic energy. But it of course has a role to play. It, of course, it can be dealt uh, in a positive way if it is placed positively. If it is not in a good position, then of course the results cannot be very good. So Mars is a planet of action, determination, passion. Mars is the minister to the king. Mars is the soldier who goes out, fights and wins. And even competition is seen through Mars. Whenever we see a prominent Mars position in anybody's chart, that person is very much into sports, very much into physical activities. So you see, the sign of Aries is basically a very active sign and here comes the Mars in its old Moultra code. So it feels quite comfortable. One thing you'll see is that all around the world, travels will be a prominent part. People will go, uh, start going for adventurous trips, short trips, long trips. So travel is going to be a prominent thing for these two months. The other thing we'll see is that wherever Mars or the sign of Aries is in your chart, that will be the area of concentration for these two months. Your whole energy is going to go to that area and there will be healing towards that area. When Mars will be transiting through the nakshatra of Ashwini, there is going to be self healing. And wherever this planet is placed or wherever the sign of Aries falls, in your birth chart, that is the area where the healing is required and will be done through your own actions. So simply, now people are going to take back the control, the control that was lost in the sign of Pisces, which was, uh, you know, the actions were not going ahead. People were not, be, people were actually confused. The sign of Pisces is the sign of dilemma. So what happens is when the planet of action goes into the sign of confusion, you don't know what action to take in your life. So now at, uh, the energy of Aries is quite concentrated. So you'll know what actions to take and what area requires your action, your determination. So this is overall a very good placement, but of course we need to keep in mind a few things a few negative traits also and the negative things will be that the sign of aries is quite impulsive and mars is also an impulsive planet it takes prompt decisions arguments so what you will see is that during this time people can argue a lot specifically with male siblings male friends if you are a male, you will fight with your male friends or have arguments with your male friends. If you are a female, then you are going to fight with your uh, male siblings or male friends. So that, so what we have to be careful of that how much we are interacting, how much we are speaking. We should have a control over what we are saying. We should not take prompt decisions during this time and we should not land up to uh, land in some arguments during this time. Only this is the factor which is to be taken care of. And, then, and now uh, one important aspect we need to consider is that what are the aspects that Mars is giving? and where that aspects are going. So let me first clear that uh, Mars has three aspects basically. Mars has fourth, seventh and eighth aspect. And what is the meaning of these aspects is that the Mars fourth and eighth aspect are basically watery elements. They are the watery aspects. 
and since we know that the element due to element theory in astrology we know that water element is the element of emotions so what happens is wherever the fourth and eighth aspect of mars falls that is the area you are very emotional about you'll be very emotional you'll have an emotional connection to that area your actions will also be guided by emotions in that areas so the fourth aspect of uh, mars is basically where you'll be very over possessive or over protective towards that house for example if you have mars in the ascendant if you are aries ascendant and if mars is coming into your ascendant then its fourth aspect is in the on the fourth house and what is the fourth house fourth house is your vehicles fourth house is your convenience your happiness fourth house is your mother so such a person is going to be very possessive and overprotective of their own emotions their happiness their convenience and specifically their mother even their mother themselves is going to be very emotional and overprotective as well for example you are capricorn ascendant so mars is in your fourth house so that means that your mother will try to control you a lot during this time and you are going to be very possessive and protective over your spouse because the fourth aspect will be in the seventh house so the other thing is wherever mars is placed you'll try to dominate you'll try to control that area if you have mars in ascendant it means if you are aries ascendant you yourself will try to control everything in your life you'll try to dominate everything in your life and if you are libra ascendant suppose then your spouse is going to try to dominate you during these two months he'll be the one trying to control you to control you during these two months and now wherever the seventh aspect of mars goes that is the area you will dominate So what happens is for the sign of Virgo for example so they are going to have their Mars transit in the 8th house now these people are going to control the assets of their family they are trying to they will try to control the their income their savings the concentration will be too much towards how to uh, manage the inheritance and how to manage the money of the family and it can uh, bring extreme situations as well because 8th house is the house of ups and downs and mars is actually a critical planet in 8th house so it can bring intense situations in one's life so you have to be very careful virgo ascendant people have to are you know they virgo ascendant people have to be very careful with what actions they are taking with what situations how they are dealing with the situations so next comes the eighth aspect of mars so you know eighth aspect of mars is where where you are quite sensitive or the relative related to that area is very sensitive towards you for example if you are having your mars transit in the ninth house now that means that you are leo ascendant So for Leo ascendant they are going to have the transit of Mars in the 9th house. Now what happens is that 8th aspect is in the 4th house. Now such so you will come across such situations that you will feel a uh, heart broken or you will feel very sensitive because of your mother. Or your mother is going to feel heart broken over you or they, she is going to be feel very sensitive over you. so wherever the eighth aspect of mars falls that is the area you you are very sensitive about and you tend to hide your emotions regarding that area so that is how we judge the three aspects of mars so that becomes very easy to judge that how a planet is going to specifically mars is going to play out its role during its transit so on a whole the only thing you guys need to be careful of is arguments unnecessary competition 
and unnecessary impulsiveness. Rest, this is going to be a fun period because Mars does very well in the sign of Aries and it is quite an adventurous placement. So it is the time to sit back, sit back, relax and but of course take actions towards your goals. Okay, so guys, this was my analysis on the mass transit to the sign of Aries. I hope it's helpful. And if you guys would like to have your personal readings from me, you can go check out the link below www.asastrology.com. And under the reading section, you can book a personal reading for yourself. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.